you know, our chasing squirrels. Cleaning off the roof because I've had a couple of days of warm weather, including rain, like scattered showers today. So all that snow on the roof is starting to melt and compress and get heavier as it absorbs water. And because of the section of the cabin within the uh, boundaries of the walls uh, um, gets a lot of heat coming through the through the roof because it's not insulated get some melting up there and then it, as it gets closer to the eave where it's unheated it turns to ice 
and then creates a bit of a dam. With a shingle roof or something, it causes a major issue because then the dam, ice dam, uh, dams the water that's coming down the roof as it melts from the heat of the house, and then that backs up and it gets underneath the shingles. I don't have an issue with this roof because it's solid plank roof all the way down vertically, and then under that I have a waterproof membrane. So any water that does get underneath these roof boards comes out underneath them. Because um, I've got some gaps cut into the strapping so the water can escape. But that being said, I've got a whole bunch of more snow coming in, maybe another six inches, 15 centimeters tonight and tomorrow. So before that accumulates into heavier snow, I'll see if I can at least let some of this water and ice off the roof today before it refreezes again.
Crazy, brave but crazy. I'm a little nervous, but she just goes running. She hears branches break, breaking, but luckily it was just a tree falling over from the snow lower.
see what it. Hey, Cal, you want in, pup? <laughs> you gonna try to climb these stairs?
hungry today. Side. Here, no, over here. You want to go out or you want to have it here? You want to go outside with it? You might. morning and I get up especially on a what is this Thursday morning today so these frequent upload video uploads are interesting because I try to read as many of your comments if not all of them as possible which means what I typically do so I'll put up a video one day uh, answer questions maybe for the first hour and then you know, when I take a break with lunch or dinner or or uh, like this, just before breakfast, so while I'm having my coffee, I like to read the questions. One of the questions this morning was, why don't you get help? Why don't you have help? Or why, I think the, the intent of it was, why don't you choose to have help? Not why don't you get help or can't find help? I think what's happened for me is that I tried to do this when I was younger, and it only, it only lasted three months. I ended up finishing the cabin and had it for ten years and used it as a sort of a hunt camp. In a weekend retreat, but uh, my goal, my dream at that point was to, to live in the woods like Henry David Thoreau. It was my inspiration, I guess, at the time. So I think what drew me to this lifestyle back then is the same as it is now, and that's that um, I don't like the, I think the limitations of, you know, the rat race or uh, typical society. I think the lack of freedom is probably my number one. Uh, resentment and what wanted me what in, what drew me to this lifestyle back then and, and like I said and also now I don't like having to uh, get up at a certain time go to a job that I don't really feel passionate about I don't feel like there's a connection and I don't feel like it's something that's worthwhile of my time and I think those kind of jobs are hard to find um, they exist and I encourage everybody to try to find that because if you can it's a much more fulfilling life than one where you just go through the paces and then hope to, um, you know, you get to spend some time on the weekends doing what you really love to do. Um, but I think the, the loan thing, the doing, uh, building a loan and doing a lot of stuff in the outdoors alone, first of all, I've always uh, felt a deeper connection to nature when I'm out in the woods alone or out on the lakes, whatever I'm doing. So I think that's what drew me to something, things like bow hunting and fishing when I was younger is that it was uh, allowed me to or forced me to become much closer to nature, pay more attention to everything because you had to get close to everything, close to animals in order to have a chance at harvesting one for a meal. So when I was young, one of the things I really liked to do with my time before I became a hunter was to follow animals around and birds and stuff and try to really get to know uh, as much as I could about nature and about wildlife. I started off by uh, bird, doing bird watching, keeping a journal of all the birds, learning their sounds, finding their nests to see where, what kind of habitat they nested in and looking at their eggs. Getting close to nature just forced me to uh, really appreciate, first of all, that uh, being alone allowed me to get closer to these animals and, and uh, not having somebody else um, distracting me from the, my purpose there but also just you know pulling me off in a different direction so let's say that I heard a certain bird over here and the person I was with like my sister used to go out into the woods with quite often or sisters 
um, and a couple of friends, they might want to go over here and do this thing. And you end up compromising and maybe going there and I wanted to go here. So being alone allowed me to focus on what I, wa what I wanted to do and to, I think, learn a lot more about myself and a lot more about nature by allowing me to pursue what I was really interested in and what was worth my attention. So as I grew older and reading Henry David Thoreau and, you know, and uh, Emerson talking about self-reliance, I was inspired to go out and try to do that full time. So that's where I bought the property uh, up in this area, central Ontario, very cheaply. I worked hard for it and um, built that first cabin. But actually before that log cabin, I had a little island property, the first one that I bought actually when I was 17 was a very cheap property. It was two acres on a large island in the middle of a, a mid-sized lake in central Ontario. And I actually built a, a regular two by four cabin on that, covered it in sheet metal because my dad was able to get a bunch of uh, pieces of sheet metal. So a hideous looking thing, but very functional and spent two years uh, boating to that island and building a fire pit and all that kind of stuff and using that as a base camp to go out and hunt and fish and stuff. Um, so that, again, taught me to be independent. And a lot of times the independence was for, sort of forced because people didn't have the focus or the uh, determination to do that type of thing with all of their free time. So even though I was heavy into sports as a teenager, to hockey and soccer in particular, and, and working out, going to the gym, a little bit of kickboxing and judo and stuff like that, um, my real passion was the outdoors. So every weekend I would borrow my, my dad's truck. Amazing that uh, my parents let me have encouraged me and, and supported me getting that property and then transportation, providing transportation. So I was able to go out pretty well every weekend and any other time that I have off and work at that cabin and spend time in the outdoors. So all of these things naturally became I became independent because of it, became more self-reliant and I got to the point where I preferred it. Um, even though I, I am a friendly person, I do get along with people and I do have a fair number of friends and family that I like to spend time with, uh, there's still to me nothing like spending time in the outdoors alone. So I end up, and also at this stage of my life and throughout my life, um, it's rare to find somebody that has the time and again the dedication or the focus on doing this particular thing when they have either other responsibilities or other things that they want to pursue, other other passions. So I think that that fact, the fact that not everybody wants to do what I want to do all the time has led me to become an independent but it, at this stage it's just become my preference as well. So even though I have friends and family and I spend a lot of time with them when I'm not filming um, that's the reason that I'm in central Ontario instead of further way up north, uh, back further into the woods. Is actually, that would probably be my preference, although I love the, the landscape around here as well and the climate. Um, but I'd probably be, be even much more remote if I didn't have a family, of course. So I do spend a lot of time with them whenever I'm not filming. That's usually what I'm doing. I'm spending time with family. Now as far as the building is concerned, the same thing applies. Not many people have the time to spend doing just this kind of thing for themselves, never mind coming to help me. Although I've had lots of offers and I really appreciate that. But this place has become sort of, a, I don't know, it's become my personal challenge. It's become my legacy, I guess, something that I want to say that I've done not to brag and not to um, um, not to impress anybody else but to I guess um, for me I mean just it for my satisfaction for me to get closer to the end of my life and look back and, and see that I did something valuable and that I did something that I loved and I had a fulfilling and and meaningful life and besides family being number one and that's the most meaningful thing I've done in my life is to uh, raise two daughters and have a fantastic wife. Um, this would be the next thing that I'd be most proud of is that I'm able to or I have been able to build this place on my own without help 
uh, rise to that challenge. I think beyond the personal challenge, it's grown now to a point where being able to share that with such a broad audience and a large audience has made me realize how many people um, aspire to do this kind of thing, to do something, to do something with their lives that's meaningful and, and fulfilling. And often that time, oftentimes that means doing something alone. And I, th I think um, for me, I, I'm proud to be able to inspire people to do something like this and to show that it can be done alone because most people will find the same thing. It's hard to find like-minded individuals, whether it's family or friends or acquaintances that are, have the time and effort and focus and, and uh, passion to do exactly what you want to do. Um, this is my way of showing also to then to the world that you can put your mind to, you can do anything you put your mind to, uh, whether you're alone or not. Um, and I always think if one man can do build a cabin, build a home, and build other things. And I'm by no means the only man that's done this. It's been done many times throughout history, and many people are doing it still to this day. And I think anybody who is showing that that's possible can show that anything is possible, and that there's things that then collectively that um, you do together, you can create great things and do great things. I think we have a responsibility if we are strong enough of mind and body to be productive, to not be productive, I think is a real disservice to ourselves, our families, our friends, and our communities. So I would say that beyond what I'm doing here for myself and my family, that if you know that would be the message that I want to leave with this channel, on this channel, with my videos, is for people just to be their best selves, do what you can. Be strong, be happy, and be caring. And you can be those things if you're confident and capable. And you've tested your limits and know what you are capable of. And that you're doing things to your full potential. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm feeling this morning after reading comments. Tired, actually. It was a little bit warm in the loft. It was only minus 4 Celsius last night, so 25 degrees Fahrenheit, Kelly. So 25 degrees Fahrenheit, fire, I only had one small log on there from like 8 o'clock, 8.30, went to bed early last night. It's still over 60 degrees Fahrenheit in here this morning, so very comfortable. But a little bit too warm in the loft for what I had on. I had full uh, flannel <laughs> sleeping bag or uh, comforter thing that we use. A little warm. So I'm going to make some breakfast now, I think, and get to work. A little bit of uh, cosmetic stuff in the kitchen here and then get back out, I think, start working on the sauna while we have this mild weather. Let's see if I can knock off several, several more courses of, uh, of the walls on that. Let's dig the lugs out of the snow. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll see you at the cabin next time. Take care.